All right, talking about the voting right, I have a, a question for you. I was uh, uh, going through uh, your statement during this, uh, the reconstruction symposium, I think that was 2020, 2021. Uh, you did make a statement, uh, a kind of a reference, saying at the time that they will allow African America to vote, but they will simply not count the vote. Can you please expatiate on that? What does it mean? Well, yes. Uh, well, there are two things. I mean, there were times when they just didn't count the votes or threw them away. But what's happening now is they're finding ways to dilute that vote so that they don't have the impact that would make a difference in a, an election. That is with gerrymandering, with slicing and dicing districts, uh, it's become outrageous um, in, in how our election system works. As you know, we have an electoral college, so it doesn't matter that Hillary Clinton had uh, millions more votes than Donald Trump, but because of the electoral college, Donald Trump won the election. Um, so, and how that works is the carving up of congressional districts. Uh, and it's almost like slicing and dicing, almost surgically moving people into uh, one area. Of course, gerrymandering goes way back, uh, well before race became part of it, but it has been the way, particularly after the Civil War, uh, that race uh, became an issue, particularly in the former Confederacy. Uh, you could sort of try to draw these strange districts, pack all African Americans in one district in North Carolina, or South Carolina, and that would be the only place they could elect someone, say, for Congress. And then they went into the laws like we're going into now in the 1890s and 1898, that basically disfranchised. African Americans by having a white primary, by having a literacy laws and all these. And we're, unfortunately, it's so frightening, we're going right back to it. In fact, you know, I've said that, that the Civil War, the similarities are so, so extraordinary right now, it just calls out that everybody sort of focuses on the Civil War as the, maybe where American identity can be found. And part of that reason is, of course, the horribleness of war, how many people were killed, the more people killed in that war, Americans and, and almost any, but also it dealt with the very issues we are dealing with now, I think. And that is, what is it, what is the place of other people besides white people in our society and our culture and a democracy, what we might think of as multiculturalism now? And we're struggling again with those same issues, even though I thought that had all been solved, particularly since 1980 with the Voting Rights Act, which is so important. You shouldn't need a Voting Rights Act of 1965 because we had the 13th and 14th and 15th Amendments, and that's a part of the Constitution. But one of the historical patterns you see is the continual use of race as a way to disfranchise and keep the influence as voters of a group of people. You said before that the race, which of course I agree with you 100%, that is, is just a construction, no? that is nothing scientific that we can actually attribute to it. No? Because uh, most often time when people talk about uh, what is happening in the United States, they, they think that is where it started, that is where it ends. But I often say, no, if we are looking at the relationship between Africa and Europe and by extension, the African American and the European American who want to call themselves the real American, we need to look beyond that. That for thousands of years, these two people have been have been interacting for for very many years. So we must we must be able to look beyond that and understand where we are coming from. The way the way the society is civil set up, the African American are just set up to be disenfranchised. This the the way they occupy this this the session of the cities where they live, where they are predominant, development is low, in education is low. In, even in every way, they, there is like a chain, literally on their neck, on their leg, on their hands. So the question for you is, what is really fairly the discrimination against African America? Is it the law, the constitution, or the people? Well, I think how people have interpreted and used the law, for instance, you know, a lot of white people have uh, fought affirmative action. 
but what they don't understand is how people got into those economic areas where their houses didn't improve and everything. There was affirmative action for white people that deliberately excluded black people, particularly because at that time of the New Deal, still most African-Americans lived in the former Confederacy. Most of them were agricultural laborers or domestic. So when the New Deal put in all these policies to help people like Social Security, the Southern congressman got the, they didn't say we're gonna exclude black people, but they said, okay, that doesn't apply to domestic workers. That does not apply to farm labor. So they got, so whereas whites got so secure, but it gets even more. Look at the GI Bill. The GI Bill allowed all these soldiers from World War II to go to college and to then with that, be able to buy homes and places. And those homes, really were bought in places that were that appreciated so they had all of the sort of capital of that then they have that to be able to send their children to school black veterans black fought in every war black people uh the civil war lincoln argued probably couldn't have been won without black soldiers and even you can go further back than that well world war ii veterans could go to a college right but in the american south that were only historically black colleges. The school that I teach at, Clemson University, or the University of Indiana, they were all segregated. They Black people only under court order was, Clemson was the first place to integrate in South Carolina in 63, and only because Judge Perry and Harvey Gantt sued them and made them do it. Uh, so they had to go. Now, I love historical black colleges. One of my heroes is Dr. Benjamin Mays, a long time sort of president of Morehouse College was sort of the spiritual mentor of the civil rights movement, convinced Dr. King that he could be a minister and not an attorney and still do good things for his people. Uh, I mean, so Morehouse, I love his story, but they didn't have the resources or the connections that the white schools did that people could network afterwards. And when in fact, African-Americans did use their GI loans to buy a house, they had restricted covenant. These are state sponsored covenants called redlining that meant they could not in fact buy in the areas a home that would appreciate. It kept them out. There were covenants and other things. So their homes did not appreciate. You see how this keeps going on and on. Medical schools, were segregated. There were only really two where African Americans could go, and they were not, you know, they were good schools, but not the top one. So all of this was structurally built by affirmative action for white people. And black people were excluded by the law and by the way the law was interpreted. And you see how that builds generation after generation. People say, oh, well, slavery was over a long time ago, but it wasn't in terms of how. People were treated in discriminatory laws that is the accumulation of wealth. And that's the big difference in America. You know, the, the um, uh, salary, the comparative salaries have, have come close together now, but not the accumulated wealth that is the basis of what families and happens to family and the children of people that allow people to move up in society, what Lincoln believed in so much, having been born poor himself, that you should get rewarded according to your abilities. Does that make sense to you, what I'm saying? And Absolutely. I outline that in the book. I outline that in the book because most people are totally unaware of it. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing, the other thing is we haven't talked about is the violence and the kind of things that African Americans have faced every day. Most people think terrorism in the United States didn't occur at a 9-11. Well, African-Americans have lived in a terroristic society in the United States, at least until 1965 and the Voting Rights Act. I mean, when Dr. King went into jail, uh, people don't understand why people were, how many people had gone into jail for protesting segregation and under, never heard for, from again. Uh, and people got away with it. This Ahmad Aubrey case, are you familiar with that in Georgia? Uh, that would have, those three men who killed Ahmad Aubrey, the jogger in Georgia, who were convicted, would never even gone to trial because unless a reporter had been pursuing it, the, the 
the uh, law officials and the district attorney, all of those that enjoy, had said it, it was okay, it was justified. And, 